look at this senior class for Clemson, which has been so important to Oliver Purnell, they have never beaten North Carolina. And right there for two games, they want to finish the deal. North Carolina 120 and 19 over Clemson all time. They are 13 and 1 in this ACC tournament. Down through the years. James Mays out front as North Carolina opens up in a man. Perry gets a screen and gets a lean in. Here's Deion Thompson. All knocked off by James Mays. Thompson and Alex Stevenson, who is kind of like his body double off the bench, struggled yesterday. Didn't get an awful lot of playing time. Well, Thompson, no points in that game against Virginia Tech, and he's 2 of 11 in the two games in this conference. And it's unusual that a big man for Roy Williams would have a, a struggle from the field like that, so they need to get him going. Hans Bro up top. Looking at Ellington, who cuts through. Ty Lawson. We'll keep our eye on Ty Lawson today. Might have retweaked that ankle in yesterday's goings on. Under 10 to play in this possession. Ellington trapped in the corner. Ball's loose. Bays has it on the steal. He's got Hammonds as his running mate. And a block by Deion Thompson to stop the fast break. And Les Jones calls a jump ball, so it's going to be possession arrow to North Carolina. Not a score, but already making an impact in this game, tracking down the fast break on the turnover. Great save by Deion Thompson to bail him out. Good hustle down the floor. Sometimes, Steve, a good defensive play can get you going offensively as well. Tar Heels have not started quickly in any of their games here in this tournament against Florida State or against Virginia Tech yesterday. Our officials today, Les Jones, Jamie Lucky, and Mike Eads, and here's another steal, Casey Rivers. No. A blocking foul this time on North Carolina's Tyler Hansbro. So far, North Carolina very shaky with the basketball. Keep in mind, in the two-game series in the regular season, they had 39 turnovers against Clemson. This is what they do. This is Clemson basketball. Full court pressure, turn you over, try to be opportunistic. The other good part of that play, picking up an early foul on Tyler Hansbro. Interesting. Almost a rolling screen on Trevor Booker. <laughs> he just plowed Hansbro to the baseline. Before he finally broke free, Casey Rivers on the free throw line. And of course, uh, Clemson, this is an interesting story. They're last in the ACC in free throw percentage, but in the tournament, they've improved dramatically. And especially in the last five minutes, a huge uh, uh, last five minutes against Duke, 73%. James Mays stepping up, Cliff Hammond stepping up and making plays. Just think what their record would be if they hit free throws. Long court pass, Guignard inside with a dunk. Great oh, heels tie it up. Great strategy against the press to throw over the top. Nobody behind the press that time. Good look. Rivers, Mays, Booker, Perry, and Hammonds. Clad in purple. They're 2 0 in purple. They wore them yesterday against Duke. We're just digging deep with the facts. I am. <laughs> I'm all over the place. Here's Rivers baseline. Ginyard with the rebound. Marcus Ginyard has had himself a good ACC tournament. Hansbro, foul line jumper. Really improved that part of his game as this season has gone along. Showed the willingness to step out. I think his range is probably at about 15 feet, right at the free throw line, Steve. Here's Perry. Stolen by Hansbro. It's a track meet with Hansbro and Booker. Hansbro drives in and scores. Now just the ability and he's not a shot blocker but he's very good at working around post players and getting the steal really did everything on that play. He can change ends as quickly as any big with the basketball. Our heels in front here 6 2. Tony Clemson over for a change. Here's Rivers with a nice crossover on his hometown floor and Rivers has all four of Clemson's points. Eight of 22 in the tournament coming in. Ellington and it's it's on. Get your running shoes out. Well, this is how North Carolina, they, they didn't play this way in the first two games of the tournament, but they score as quickly after a made basket as any team in the country. Don't forget, that's how they want to do things. At 89 points a game, they have to. Fast break, transition points. North Carolina, all eight have come that way. Our heels have hit their last four field goal attempts. Barry out front. Nice diagonal to Booker. Booker scores inside. See, right now, that's a smart thing. You've got to attack Tyler Hansbrough. He's going to be reluctant to pick up that second foul. Lawson wanted to look ahead. 
Here's Hansbrough, and we got a whistle and a foul coming up. And it's going to be charged to James Mays. He was moving. He picks up the foul. That's his first, team's first. Danny Green quickly into the ball game, as well as Alex Stevenson. Hansbrough and Thompson go out. A Woodman of the World Scoreboard showing you what happened last night in NCAA tournament play. Conference tournaments, finals, and of course, we've got action today. Selection Sunday, it is. Ginyar. This is the guy, Danny Green, who's really struggled a little bit in the tournament. They need his offense. That was a nice pass. Stevenson can't finish off the play. Demonte Stitt is in the ball game with the rebound for Clemson. And a little subtle thing like fumbling that delivery pass allowed the defense to collapse on him, and that's why he missed. Hammonds quickly to his left hand. Boy, no, no jitters about an ACC tournament final for either team, Steve. Combined seven of 11 field goals. Eight all. And a great start. Here's Ellington. Ellington up and under. He scores. Well, they're, they're playing over the, top, over the top of the pressure, and Ellington makes a nice drive to his left hand that time. They get over 60 at halftime. Is this an ABA game that's broken out here? <laughs> There's the shooting percentage. Stitt takes it inside, out to Booker. And the rebound comes away to Ste Stevenson. It's Lawson in the front court. Lawson with a crossover. Right into the teeth of the defense. Here's Hammonds. Doesn't have the same lift that he normally does. He's not going to jump over people. AC Rivers three is rebounded out front by himself. He gets it off the glass and off. Almost picked up another board. Mays blocked as he went up. Here's Hammonds off to Rivers. No. The ball went over the backboard, and it's going to be a Tar Heel ball. Wild start. ACC championship action. Just like we like it. The emotion of being here, and these teams are past that, and they're into it now. 10-8, North Carolina. A breathless five minutes has North Carolina up 10-8 over Clemson. Mike, we oftentimes talk about Tyler Hansbrough's offense, but defensively, he's quite at it. Yeah, let's take a look at it. He's being right here. You can see the initial front on Booker, and then he'll realign himself and get behind, run the play through, and then when he does that, he'll release and come around. Booker's got to take a step to that pass and meet the ball, but Hansbrough makes the play defensively and then converts it on the other end. Great handle by Hansbrough, who has four points so far this afternoon. Let me see what he's done against Clemson. 39 in the double overtime win at home. Hansbrough's back. Quentin Thomas is in the lineup for the first time at point guard today. Thompson in the lane. Kept alive, and here comes Thompson again, stripped by Potter. And it's going to go off Potter's leg and out of bounds. David Potter in the game along with Terrence Oglesby. They change the call and it's going to be Clemson ball. That was a good piece of officiating right there. Les Jones having a better look at it. And that did go off a Carolina player. Les in his seventh ACC championship game. And we've got uh, Jamie Lucky in his third. Mike Eats officiating his first. Dead baseline. Got a whistle and a foul, and it's coming up against North Carolina. It's going to be, a, I believe, on Clinton Thomas. Closed captioning for today's telecast is provided by Bojangles. You've got to want to need to get a habit, Bojangles. Demonte Stitt, it's been a little up and down for him in his first ACC tournament. He had seven assists, only one turnover versus BC, but he's only scored three points total, Steve. So I like the idea of being a little aggressive, getting in line, and find some, finding some rhythm for yourself there. And a couple of uh, game winning free throws that beat Georgia Tech or rather Virginia Tech in the last game of the season. Gave them their 10th victory of the year. Stitt, also from the Charlotte area. Matthews, North Carolina, where he went to Butler High School. In the corner, Ellington for three. Uh, that, that can't ever happen. Uh, he's a guy that you, you can't help off of. He, you can't give him good looks. Hammonds out to the top. Potter gets inside of Hansbrough. Here's Oglesby for three. Rebound comes down. It's loose. Who's got it? Hammonds. 
Raymond Sykes is in it again. Hand and an Ogilvy for another three. And he's one of those guys, and it's tough to guard him because he just keeps backing up until you don't put a hand up anymore. High to 13. Danny Green tries a three ball. Here's Raymond Sykes with the rebound. Potter and Sykes, and breaking it up is Danny Green. Great pursuit from behind. That's just hustle on defense. You never want to give up on a break. You never know when that pass is going to come. Danny Green did a great job of saving a the basket. Ginyard will come in and replace Ellington. Number one, Marcus Ginyard. Section for 22 wings. Score tied at 13 all. And it's still at a breathless pace between these two. Both are in hard fought wins. Here's Oglesby again. Oh no. There's always an unexpected hero in these games, Steve. Is it Terrence Oglesby this year? Guy who stepped up and has won some games for them. Green cuts through. Sykes and Thompson battle over the rebound. Clemson wins that battle. Oglesby with back-to-back -back threes. Sykes really not a factor against Duke. Seven minutes, no points, but having an impact here. A 12 points against BC. A traveling call on Potter as he went in. So a race to the basket. Clemson's lead remains at three. Oliver Purnell, the job that he has done. You know, Steve, no shortcuts in building this program. And nope. they could have done it early on, but he just he laid the foundation out, did it brick by brick, and is, uh, they find themselves in the title game here and in the NCAA tournament. Here's Green for three. It's three ball city. The last three field goals have been three pointers from either side. And that's the X factor for North Carolina. Can Danny Green come in and then be a counterpoint to Tyler Hansborough on the perimeter? Stip out front with Clinton Thomas. Clinton Thomas has been on the floor for more wins than anybody in a Carolina uniform ever. Potter. And Ginyard is fouled by Terrence Oglesby. We talk about Thomas, and he could play a very prominent role in this game today, Steve. And I thought he's done a marvelous job in Ty, in Ty Lawson's absence, eight and one in those games. And uh, depending on how his uh, how Lawson's ankle is here, Lynn Thomas may get a lot of floor time in this championship game. Native of Oakland, California, he's raised his average in Lawson's absence from 3.2 to 7.1. Not the three-point threat, but very good at using his size and getting in the lane. Struggles against the press here, near backboard violation, and then Thomas races in. Here's Green for three. Stevenson off the glass. And see, that's a good shot. I like the three because you have board coverage. Both Stevenson and Hansborough had both sides of the rim covered. That breaks the tie. The Tar Heels back on top. Stitt gets into the middle and then gets fouled by Quentin Thomas. It's going to be two. There's the look. You see the rebounder right there already setting up shop. Stevenson on a per minute basis, Steve, is an excellent rebounder, about one every three minutes, which coming off the bench is, is a ter terrific production. Thomas has to come off with his second foul, and Ty Lawson is back on the floor. Stitt looking for help. On the backboard to get it from Oglesby. Oglesby's numbers are interesting. He's a higher score on the road than he is at home. That's a deep three. Wow. That came, he was still in the decap. <laughs> and Hans Pro was pretty close to him, too. We got a whistle and a foul. And it's going to be on Oglesby, and that's going to be two on the three point sharp shooter. Time out on the floor. An interesting first half. The Tar Heels by two. Let's take a look at Terrence Oglesby, a guy with unlimited range. That's a, that's a reasonable three shot right there. That's a little bit farther out. He knocks down both of those. And this one is from Matthews somewhere about 20 <laughs> miles from here. He finally gets the miss. And he is a little chippy as well, not afraid to battle inside with Tyler Hansborough. But he's accustomed to taking and making big shots. He hit the three that beat Maryland up in College Park. Recapped an incredible comeback. They were down by 20. Got two fouls, so he has to sit for a while. Clemson goes back into his zone. Ginyard. Ellington. Lawson Stevenson and Thompson is a nice shot by Ellington in the corner. He's got 10. And of the perimeter players, I mean, Lawson's capable, but you don't know about his, his leg and how that's going to hurt his shot. But Ellington is the one guy you can't lose contact with in the zone. Carolina with its biggest lead early on in this game. 
about 90 seconds from the midway point of this first half. Mays in the post. Booker, not an awful lot of movement by Clemson here. Stiff gets fouled on the jump shot by Ty Lawson. Here's Roy Williams, Hall of Fame coach. National Coach of the Year six times, as a matter of fact. Five Final Four appearances. Conference Coach of the Year eight times. The last in the ACC of 2006. That includes his Big 8, Big 12 career. Steve, if Oliver Purnell and Clemson are to win this championship, he'll have beaten three coaches already in the Hall of Fame. That's amazing. Think about that run. Yeah, they had Mike Krzyzewski yesterday. Clemson now four of five on free throws. Five of six as Stitt hits the ball. They had only one free throw in the last game against North Carolina. A little double overtime loss in Chapel Hill. Mays with the steal. Stitt follows up. Gets the three. And that was under duress, too. Marcus Gidger came back in the play and got a hand up. Good concentration by Stitt. And uh, he's come alive offensively for the Tigers. Already doubled his output in the first two games. Mike has got six. Thompson at the post. It gets Mays. This shot it short, and it's taken here by Stitt. I don't know if he got a block on that or not. James Mays, top of the floor, playing without the bandage on his hand. And Casey Rivers, playing in front of a home crowd, now has six. Yeah, I'm sure he was not happy with his production. We got a whistle and a foul coming up. It's going to be on Stevenson, and that stops the fast break for Clemson after the steal and a certain two points. Clemson steps ahead. There's the look, and then the steal from behind. Uh, Lawson a little casual with the basketball, but that's the pursuit of Clemson in the full court. And, then, and there's the concentration on the shot. And Rivers, that's a tough play for a lefty to go right and shoot a little fadeaway jump shot. Clemson with the ball. Up by one. On top Rivers. Sam Perry is back in now for Oliver Purnell's Tigers. Rivers deep three. KC Rivers puts Clemson up by four. He's got nine. Well, he is matching Ellington production on the perimeter. Pressure is on for Clemson. Here's Lawson for three. No. Rivers hustles for the rebound. Very good rebounder at his position. Over six a game. On the cut, Booker pass deflected and stolen by Ellington. It's four on one. Ginyard to finish. Four for Marcus Ginyard. Two point Clemson lead. Normally Ellington is a finisher in that play, but I thought he ran that break extremely well. Was patient. Made the defense commit and then made the right play. Tigers and Tar Heels just going at each other as they had in two regular season games. Here comes Booker down the lane, up and under with the left hand. Or just too much room and a very confident move by Booker. He went a little laterally at the end to avoid any sort of charge call. Tar Heels trying to avoid the turnover in backcourt. Ginyard with hands Hansborough underneath, blocked, and set out of bounds by Clever Booker. For the two games in the regular season, Clemson kind of played Hansborough one and a half. This is a definite double team on the catch. You see Booker coming in from behind, a very good shot blocker. And this is the way they defended him down in Little John, just Hansborough trying to contend with big bodies. He only had seven field goal attempts in that game. Ellington, baseline jump is good. Ellington with 12. Tar Heels trail by two. Looking like the Wayne Ellington who had a huge night down in Little John. Five for five tonight or this afternoon. Here's Booker on the baseline over Stevenson. And that is a shot. He has range. He has actually made three pointers this year, Steve, but he has a good mid range game. Ellington, first miss of the day. I just Marcus Ginyard does so many little things for this team and he's had a very productive tournament but he's been a terrific rebounder and he recycles on that play. Ellington draws the double team. Thompson kicks to the corner. Thomas back in with two fouls stolen by Rivers. He leads Mays. 
Pass back is stolen back. Thompson with the steal, Ginyard with the drive. Block. Met at the top by Booker. That's his third block. Trevor Booker plays about four or five inches taller. He's listed at 6'7", but he's playing like a seven-footer. Wait just a second. That's a 10-second violation against Clemson. Got a timeout on the court. What a block by Trevor Booker. The crowd's alive, and the Tigers lead it by two. Clemson leading North Carolina 27 to 25. Wayne Ellington putting on a show for the Tar Heels so far this afternoon. 7.44 left to go on this first half of play. Take a look at it. He had 36 in the win down in Little John. He has seen an early big basket. Surprisingly, Steve, he's gotten some open looks. He's got to get a man and get a hand out in his face. I think with Ellington now, you have to make him a driver. He's got a pretty good mid-range game, but much better to live with a two-point basket than a good and open look at a three. After Trevor Booker's big block, Clemson had trouble bringing the ball into front court, neglected to get it up there before the 10-second call, so they turn it back to North Carolina. Here's the bench points. Clemson primarily off stint and speed. Graves is into the ball game now for his first appearance for the Tar Heels. Played a key role in this tournament so far, albeit a very small part, but it's an important one. Here's Thomas. It's around Oglesby and hits. The Tar Heel fans shouting Q for Quentin Thomas. Well, and it's nice to see him and, and the role that he's played his senior year to go out and, and really be a big part of this team. Jeez, that's the sixth tie of this game. Hammond's on the left wing. And it goes behind the backstop. Oliver Purnell and the Tigers logging 24 wins this season. As you look at the Woodman of the World scoreboard, we've got Big East got action around the country. Big East had their championship last night. Pittsburgh won. Graves in the middle. Andrew tries to tip it in, and it's Oglesby, the smallest man in the jam, comes up with it. Hammonds, Sykes, met at the rim. Great block by Stevenson. We've seen some great defensive plays around the basket area in this game on both ends of the floor. And for Hansbro inside. Graves dealing with Hammond. Now that Sykes was lurking behind him, Booker did a nice job fronting, which, couldn't, which uh, they couldn't make the delivery pass. Pass into Stevenson, blocked by Booker, but a foul coming up could be on Cliff Hammonds, and it is. Our Chevrolet stars of the semifinals of this tournament, Tyler Hansbro, with a marvelous performance against Virginia Tech at 26 and 9. And Malcolm Delaney, the freshman shot with ice in his veins, had 15 yesterday. Steve Virginia, the Virginia Tech and Seth Greenberg, they did everything but win that game yesterday. And it, it took the player of the year to make a player of the year shot to break their hearts. Here's Stevenson with the free throw. Oglesby sits out. Look at this. Two games against Clemson, 56 of 66. This is their first, actually their second free throw of the day. And Clemson did that. We talked about a key defending without uh, fouling early on, and they've done a pretty nice job in this first half. More importantly, Tyler Hansbrough has not gotten to the line. They've kept him under control for the most part in this game. He's only got three field goal attempts. He has 18 in the first two games of this tournament that he's played. Potter in the corner. Mr. Rivers. He's in a matchup right now with Hansborough and Sykes. They're saving Hansborough a little bit. He did, they're not going to throw the ball into Sykes. He's not a primary scorer. Here's Rivers with four on the shot clock. Rebound comes down to Potter. He finds Sykes. Dealing with Hansborough inside the rebound. Booker, and it's tipped out of his hands and out of bounds. Last touch by Clemson. It'll be North Carolina ball. You have two of the best offensive rebounding teams in the conference out on the floor right now. The difference is, though, see that Clemson shoots a lower percentage. North Carolina, the best shooting team in the conference. So you put that two together, that is a lethal combination. Open of the world scoreboard, spotlighting college conference basketball tournaments, championship rounds around the country. I think three number one seeds are, are uh, 
I pretty much said I think North Carolina is going to be a number one seed. UCLA will be a number one seed. Memphis will probably be a number one seed. Might be between Kansas and Texas. Yep. For that fourth one. Lawson's pass is knocked away by Mays. Green competes. Sykes wins at the rim but doesn't get it. Here's Potter. No. Tipped around and finally in. It's James Mays. Lawson back the other way. We got a whistle over the back. Foul is going to be on Thompson. I don't know that I've seen two layups missed at point, point blank range, but then May is able to clean it up. You finish, you figure that Sykes is going to turn this one, but Danny Green making the nice play in here, and then James Mays. Oh boy. Maybe, uh, that was a little closer. It was a call from the North Carolina bench for goaltending on that play, and they might have a pretty good argument. A little count. Here's Rivers on his way in, and he draws the foul on the drive this time. And it looks like it's going to be on Danny Green, even though Hansborough hit the deck. It's a 16 foul on the Tar Heels. Well, I talked about it, Steve, that the last three games of the regular season, Rivers averaged six points, eight of 30 shooting. And then 8 of 22 in the first two games here, but he is playing as a much more confident offensive player. Rivers to the line. He's got eight or nine, actually. ACC basketball is brought to you in part by Kia. Rivers on for one more. Clemson now on the stripe five of seven. He misses there. Clemson by one. Five to play in what has been a breathless first half. Hansbrough inside. Oh, blocked from behind. It was made. Again, look at three jerseys around him. Doesn't matter that time. Hansbrough with his six point. On that block, he could turn away from the double team and shoot the right handed hook to the baseline. Near steal. Now Hansbrough does, but he can't do it. He takes out the North Carolina coaching staff as he goes into the stands and gets a roar of applause. Joe Holiday faithful. Making the save right there. And if you're going to crash into the bench, crash into your own bench. Yeah. <laughs> You'll come out of it a lot better. Here's the play. Roy Williams catching him. Everybody getting into the act. Yeah, Holiday took the worst of the crunch. Here's Roy. And it's the top of the floor. It's around Booker. Very few post touches for Clemson in this game between Mays and Booker. Here's Mays. Goes right through the lane. It comes out to stint for three. Inyard taps the rebound to Lawson who finds Green. Nice play, but he can't convert, but does on the other side. All right, that, was a, that was a questionable decision. It was a one-on-three break, but Danny Green made it work just because of the offensive rebound. Well, he knew where he was going. Hammonds to Mays. Inside, Booker. Stripped of the ball by Green. Booker again forces his way in. Yeah, I think that's a good miss, a mismatch for Clemson. Booker, a size and strength advantage against Danny Green. Here's Steele there, and now it is. Lost out of bounds. It's going to be Tar Heel ball. Clemson applies the pressure, and right now they trail the Tar Heels by one. Sophomore Trevor Booker is such a huge part of what this Clemson team does inside. He's got the ability to not only make that shot, but put it on the floor and get to the rim. Very tough on the low block, the lefty. This little jump hook inside, and then of course on the defensive end, he and James Mays have done a terrific job cleaning things up inside and limiting Tyler Hansbrough's Hansborough's effectiveness early on. Booker has had double doubles against North Carolina both times in the regular season, and so far today, off to a pretty good start. Booker has two rebounds to go with that. And he's whoever when, when North Carolina has a smaller lineup, and that's when Danny Green is at the four. Whoever Green is guarding inside has got an advantage for Clemson to go in and go post him. And he's been guarding Booker. That's a tough assignment for him. North Carolina may have to double. Right now they're in that lineup because Green is the tallest of the four outside of Hansbro. Hansbro, top of the floor. 
Inyard finds Ellington who turns. His banker won't go and rebound comes away to Booker. That's his third. Here's the steal by Green. Finds Ellington ahead of the pack who scores. Wayne Ellington with 14 and the Tar Heels have a three point lead. They tried to find that mismatch and go to Mays but it was a poor lot pass and that was a terrific catch by Ellington on the run to get that and then convert. Booker backs in on Hansbrough. Gets around, finds Mays, he's free. Those two really play well together. That was a good look by Booker. Usually Mays, Mays is a very good passer out of the post, and he's the one who usually makes that play, but Booker returns the favor. And how active can Mays be now that he doesn't have the bandage on his hand? He's now able to go to either side. Yeah, imagine uh, putting a couple tube socks on your hand and trying to go out and shoot. Their turnover, Clemson gets it back. That's the ninth Tar Heel turnover. Stitt, top of the floor. Tigers can take the lead right here. I don't know that that's a shot that Oliver Cornell really wants. James Mays hoisting up a three. Green wanted to find Ellington. Instead, he threw it right into the hands of the Tigers. A.C. Rivers. Will Williams not happy about turnovers, but especially those last two. The North Carolina very casual with the basketball. Here's the shot by Rivers for three. Eight lead change in this game, and the Tigers lead it by two. We've got a foul coming up on Cliff Hammond. Our principal financial edge of the game is transition points. North Carolina with 20 to 3 over the Clemson Tigers. Yeah, that's, that, that's, that's just North Carolina playing their style. I thought for a while it took them some time. And Quentin Thomas in there, they weren't quite as quick up the floor. And now with Ty Lawson, and it's not just his speed, it's also his ability to look ahead and make that long pass, especially to Ellington. David Potter replaces Casey Rivers in the lineup. Booker gets a rest. Ivan Sykes is back in. Here's Ellington at work. Lawson. Lawson lost the handle inside. Comes up with it. Goes up and scores. First basket of the game in dramatic fashion. Ties it up at 36. Tough play by Ty Lawson to come up and get that. I thought uh, Raymond Sykes had uh, clear sight on the basketball. In among three Tigers to score. Here's Sykes from the elbow. Ellington down at the front court for the Tar Heels. And consecutive jump shots by Mays and Sykes. A big part of the offense for Clemson. Hansbro in the middle and knocked out of bounds by James Mays. Well, I'm not a big fan of point guards in on the glass, but Lawson, that was off of a drive. You really have to worry about defensive balance on that point, getting somebody back. But with Ginyard there, you probably have that covered. Lawson shows you the strength that he has to finish in the paint. Sykes comes off, Booker comes on, inbound pass, Ginyard meets the rim first. And couldn't get it over the top. Final minute of this first half. You know, Mike, you expect tournaments to build upward to a championship game, and this game has not disappointed in this first half. Stiff. Oops, lost the ball. A.C. Rivers for three. Boy, both guys on either end of the floor. K.C. Rivers is getting terrific looks. North Carolina is going to have to clean that up and get somebody in his shirt. 15 points for K.C. Rivers playing in his hometown. Nice shot on the baseline by Thompson. That's his first basket of the game. Clemson by one. Shot clock is gone. What you want to do is make sure you take the last shot of the half and not give North Carolina a chance to run up the floor. Hansborough goes out to trap and falls. That puts Stitt down the lane. He tried to get it to the corner to Hammonds. It'll be North Carolina ball with 10 seconds to play. Eight turnover for Clemson. And a 30-second timeout called by Roy Williams. Timeout on the floor as the teams discuss strategy. You should, too. Premium service, expect it. Don't pay it. Talk to Chuck, Charles Schwab. Plenty of time for Ty Lawson to get the ball up the floor and get a good opportunity. I think that was a mistake by DeMontez Stitt. 
He went with too much time on the clock. Now Carolina forced his hand a little bit by coming out with that double team, getting the turnover, but still, uh, you want to make sure you want to go in with momentum now. North Carolina is successful. They could reclaim the lead and go into halftime feeling a little better about themselves. It's been a wild first half between these two. We've seen some great defense at the rim. We've seen pressure put on by Clemson. They've forced some turnovers that North Carolina doesn't like to commit. Tar Heels, though, I think probably Ty Lawson shot inside kind of shows their resolve. Yep. And it's typical of the resolve they've shown throughout this tournament. And they've had to draw on that resolve with their wins over Florida State and Virginia Tech. The thing that's amazing to me, Steve, and consider this, North Carolina only has two losses all year. Both of those are at home. They have not lost on the road or on a neutral site. And that has worked very well in their favor over the next three weeks in the NCAA tournament. Lumps it up by a point. Tar Heels with the ball in backcourt. Lawson. Blocked by Booker. A shot in the air. Oh, it would have counted had it gone, but it did not. Tar Heels make a bid to take the lead, but it's the Clemson Tigers headed off to the locker room at halftime in a game that has seen eight lead changes in seven times. Why well, Trevor Booker really has had a terrific first half. Four blocks for him. And then Lawson almost comes up big again on the offensive rebound. That one halfway down looked like one of my putts. <laughs> 38 Clemson leading North Carolina in our championship game the 55th here at Charlotte Bobcats Arena Mike I don't know what these guys have planned for after intermission but the opening act is pretty good No, first 20 minutes very good especially for your Clemson they come by this lead honestly they kept North Carolina off the free throw line they did a nice job of doubling down on Tyler Hansborough so I, I think a good recipe for success there putting the pressure on and let's turn things over to Scott Przewanski who talked to both coaches after their meetings in the locker room yeah, for Clemson, even though they've made six three-pointers, Oliver pronounces we got to get the ball inside to continue to be successful. He likes their press, too. He thinks it's having a cumulative effect against North Carolina. So I asked Roy Williams just about that press. I said, what do you need to do, coach? He said, not turn it over pretty much, but we got to be aggressive against the press. When we get tentative, that's when we're having problems. And they were aggressive early in the ball game. We'll try to do that again here. Well, with regards to Clemson, Mike, you talked about them needing more looks in the post. And that's, you know, I don't have problems with threes, but if you build inside out, that's fine. Hit the post, get some double teams, and then work out from there. Foul is going to be on Ty Lawson as Sam Perry. And, and, and to follow up on what, what Scott was saying from, from Roy Williams' perspective, I thought that uh, they looked, and there you see the two leading scorers right there. Those two are having a terrific match, Casey Rivers and Wayne Ellington. But I thought North Carolina was most effective against the press when they threw over the top, got some long looks and some layups that way. Perry to the free throw line. He hits Sam Perry. The ACC tournament, a good complimentary role at seven and a half points, and came into this game at four for seven. With five boards. Hansbro gets the miss. Amazing, Perry. You know, they had two players with in-season knee surgery uh, to come back, Perry, early on, and then Demontez Stitt. And uh, relatively speaking, they didn't miss much time as a result of it. James Mays. Played through most of his injuries, and he had every other body part covered. Ball thrown out of bounds as Thompson had nowhere to go with that one. And that is the 11th turnover. Yeah, what, and what, what Clemson did there, they shut off all outlets, and they made Thompson make a play, and he kicked it out of bounds. You saw that graphic, 4-2, and two, and they trail at the half. They trailed twice against Clemson and came back and won. Got their first lead in the first half on Clemson this season. Ginyard to Ellington. Ellington stops, uses the glass nicely. But Wayne Ellington is just playing with a lot of confidence in this game. Love that. He's got he's maybe maybe one of the best mid-range shooters in the league. Sophomore from Linwood, Pennsylvania. Leading score in this game with 16 for the Tar Heels. Here's Rivers. Drops to Booker. Ball lost out of bounds off Booker. It's going to be Tar Heels ball. Interesting choice of a pass by Casey Rivers choosing to bounce. Come on, Wayne. Come on, get here. And actually, as a post player, I like to get bounce passes a little easier to catch and a little softer on your hands. But Booker, I mean, you look back, and this is going to be a very close game. And when you have easy opportunities like that, you have to convert those inside. And clearly, this team looking to get into the post more. Goes on Mays. It's going to be two on James Mays. 
And let's see Steve over the last 20 minutes how James Mays does at the front of this press. This is the third game in three days. Does this style take a toll on the Tigers? Here's steal by Hammonds up in the front court. Ginyard. Ginyard scores. Marcus Ginyard has been the elixir for the Tar Heels who lead here 42-40. You know, Wayne Ellington is special and he makes special plays, but Marcus Ginyard does everything solid. He's just a real rock for this team in the, in the backcourt. Booker backing into the post. Hammonds wants to give it another look. This time he got behind Hans Brown, missed. Had everything he wanted on the play. Here comes Lawson. Lawson scores at the other end. And then he compounded it. He tried to steal the ball from Lawson at half court instead of getting back, and that allowed Lawson to get right to the front of the rim. Hansbro, with an extended discussion with Mike Eads, said he got hit in the eye. Here's the look, just a power move. The repost, I really like that action. Hansbro trying to work around. It was a little slap on the face, but boy, Booker. Those are, again, two consecutive plays. And, uh, and Tyler Hansbro having a conversation with Mike Eads. As he held him off of that. Clear out on the right hand. Well, he lost the contact. And then, then you see Booker just try to get out, and then this leads to the fast break inside. Marcus Ginyard, a nice finish. Hansbro's lost the contact. He's over there with trainer Mark Davis. Getting that situation taken care of. He Tar gets, heels up by four. He leads the league in lost contacts, too. <laughs> I've done their games. <laughs> Well, you, you get a look at the contact that he takes. You lose the contact on that contact. Booker in the post. It's from the Department of Redundancy Department. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Inside, Mays up and under, hits the equipment. But Perry will finish. Not a real big part of the offense, but those are the energy plays that Sam Perry makes for the Clemson Tigers. Don't leave anything for granted. Ellington for three. Rebound comes away to Hammonds. It could be just a touch on an errant ball that gives you a game-winning or game-changing basket. Well, we, we know the margin for error in the games of the regular season was very, very thin for both of these teams. Mays knocked it out of bounds. It'll be North Carolina ball. There's the look down low. Initial play and actually and actually Mays kept that alive by just poking it free. Perry in the right place at the right time. Mays comes off, Hansbro back. Hansbro with 23-point average, but only six today. This is looking more and more like the first game between these two and Clemson. And it's not like he's got a poor shooting game going on, Steve. He's not even getting touches. Here's Casey Rivers with a steal. That's the tenth of the game. Hammonds leads the pack. And guess what? We're tied again. I don't know what you had planned this afternoon, but you might cancel it. It might, it might involve five or ten extra minutes of action. <laughs> <laughs> Hands bro inside. Oh, boy, he gathers a crowd. Goes up again. Scores the time and gets the foul. A magnificent play by Tyler Hansbro. The play doesn't end against Tyler Hansbrough until you get the basketball because he will keep going after it. He doesn't care if he gets his shot blocked. He is relentless in his pursuit of getting the ball in the rim. And this is where, Steve, you have to be in better condition than Tyler Hansbrough, and that is not an easy thing. No. He scores with more people hanging off his arms than anybody in ACC history. The game, Trevor Booker. You, you know, the thing about players like that, and everybody talks about the fact that he gets calls. Well, the fact of the matter is that Tyler Hansborough absorbs more punishment than any player in the league and probably gets fouled where there are no calls more than anybody. Nine points for Tyler Hansborough. 47 44, North Carolina on the three point play. Hansborough with a block, but there was a foul prior to that. And the foul is going to be charged to Thompson. It's going to be his second. Our Chick-fil-A nugget of the game. The number one and three seeds have met in the ACC championship nine times. Number one's had the good, better measure of it, seven and two in those games. And a lot of that, uh, you know, comes down again to rest. And the, and the rest that the number one seed gets all the way through the tournament. They play the first game, they're the first ones back to their rooms. It used to be 
uh, when this team, when this conference was uh, in the early days, number one got a bye for a couple of years when they were down to seven. They got a chance to play, move on and wait. Having to win only two games instead of three, a huge bonus. Rivers. With a pair down the other way and a steal by Rivers on the other end. Not a good decision by Quentin Thomas that time. Put Thompson in a bad way. Mays gets it back. Comes back again. Meets the front of the rim. And we got a whistle and a foul coming up against North Carolina. It's on Danny Green. Timeout on the floor. More action from the ACC championship coming up with the Tar Heels by one. This is the 15th meeting between these two teams. North Carolina has won 13 of the last 14. The one exception on that shot by Greg Buckner with the dunk with very little time left and it propelled then sixth ranked Clemson to a win over North Carolina 75 to 73. And, and right now you, you saw the dunk inside and uh, the concern for Clemson is they're getting opportunities in the paint but both Booker and Mays not converting. Mays fortunate to get to the free throw line on this possession. There, Clemson will get it out of bounds, but they've missed several opportunities inside. He yeah. may came, come back to haunt them. In foul situation: Clemson with two, North Carolina with three. Tyler Hansbro has electrified this crowd with his activity today. With the steals. Clemson with 12 today. They're averaging nine in this tournament, so they're ahead of schedule. Monte Stitt. He's on the floor with Oglesby Rivers. Oglesby was thinking about shooting right there. <laughs> Too deep into that decal that time. <laughs> he shot everywhere outside of it, though. Drop into Mays, caught by Rivers. Yes, he does. Rivers with his fourth three-pointer of the day has 20. Actually, it was a missed catch that allowed him to get it. Ellington drives, gets the bucket and the foul. Don't take that victory lap because North Carolina is looking to take it out of the net and run. As soon as the ball goes through the rim, you have to convert to defense against this team. Good call by the referee. Sykes sliding over, never really establishing possession. Ellington making a very acrobatic layup. Sykes with his second foul, and Ellington with a three point play. He now has 18, make it 19. Trevor Booker checks back in. Raymond Sykes goes out. Places. Well, transition point so far North Carolina with a big edge in that territory 29 7. Tar Heels by one on Wayne Ellington's three point play. Casey Rivers has it slapped away by Danny Green. Ellington has a trailer. This time he's got a foul. And it looks like it's going to be it's either on Stitt or Oglesby. It's going to be on Stitt. Just where the turnover occurred for North Carolina. So quick to get the ball over half court. Ellington, a great free throw shooter, which serves him well. He'll go to the free throw line for the second time in as many possessions. Two. Now they're going to change the foul to Oglesby. So that's his third. Whenever, whenever you slap at the ball and the ball goes straight up in the air, that's usually indicative of a foul. One. Of course, he's had one of the bigger scoring nights in the ACC, 36 against Clemson. Both against Clemson. Yep. Tyler Hansborough and Wayne Ellington on separate occasions. Ellington with a rare double miss. The lead remains one for the Tar here. Stid out front. Rivers runs to a spot, fires. Ellington. Ginyard. Back to Green. They'll go to Ellington. One hands throw in the post. There's the double. He'll score anyway. A fascinating match. I mean, they had James Mays on Wayne Ellington out on the post. So he couldn't come in and double. And you really can't double Hansborough with a guard because he plays right through it. 52 49 North Carolina. Oglesby playing with three fouls on offense. Maybe an opportunity, you know, for James Mays to get into the post against Danny Green because they elected to have Hansborough guard Booker. Stitch shot doesn't go. We've got a whistle and a push. And who's it on? It's going to be on Hansborough. Tyler Hansbro's picked up foul number two. 
That's his first foul. The Carolina crowd is booing. But that's his first foul since the first minute of the game. That's right. Fourth team foul on the Tar Heels. Ball side out or actually underneath for Clemson. And that and that foul occurs because Booker, we talk about offensive rebounding is just hard work and determination, and he would not give up on the play. Watch the triple. Speed to come off a screen, it disappeared. Booker at the elbow, and throw doesn't bite. Skip pass out front. Stiff finds Bay's baseline. Tried to wrap to the corner, and no one was home. Clemson with the turnover, that's number 12. Well, even those turnovers, Oliver Purnell wants the ball and wants the pressure. Here's Hansborough and Booker going at it inside. The referee's letting him play. With Hansborough on defense. Thomas takes Booker baseline, finds Hansborough. Blocked by Booker, but there's a foul prior to that. And Hansborough going to the line. And this one's definitely going to be on Devontae Stills. First free throw attempts of the game for Tyler Hansborough, a guy who averages over 10 attempts per. And as we said earlier, had. 18 free throws coming into this championship game. There's nothing like college basketball, and if you're celebrating the win, do it right. The way you celebrate says a lot about you, and it reflects on your school. So be responsible. Take care of yourself and your friends. A message from Anheuser Busch. Misses on the foul line may come back to haunt Carolina. They've had several of them recently. But Clemson not getting the rebound, giving him second life. Danny Green tries to finish and does. Biggest lead of the game for the Tar Heels, calling all, causing Oliver Pinnell to call for a timeout. In light blue, they're cheering hard as the Tar Heels have opened up their largest lead of this half. And welcome back to Charlotte, North Carolina on a run here against Clemson and found uh, Bobby Jones here in the stands. A great for Carolina, won an ACC tournament title in 72. How special is this tournament? Well, it's very special for people in this area. It's, uh, it's a lifelong dream just to come to a game and uh, to be a part of a game for myself is a great experience. How fun would a game like this be to play in right now? Very intense game. A lot of talent out here. I, I don't know how I could handle that. <laughs> you could more than do it. Defensively, one of the best players to ever play in the league. Bobby Jones, appreciate it. Thank you. Back over to you guys. All right, Scott, thank you very much. Tar Heels have opened up their biggest lead of the game. Six. Booker finds Rivers on a nice backdoor cut. Perfect outcome when you come out of a huddle to execute and get a layup. Oliver Purnell, I like the timeout. He didn't want any more separation between North Carolina and his ball club. That's it to four, Rivers with 22. Thomas, nice pass underneath and a block by Mays, but hands throw to finish. That's what happens when your guy goes for a block, and that's how penetration breaks down a defense and left hands were wide open on the offensive glass. Our heels, looking to get that six point buffer. A save off the hands of Oldsby out of bounds from Booker, and the Tar Heels have it back. Oliver Purnell pleading with his team to get up and play defense and try to turn this turnover around. Green into front court. Green to the basket. He had eyes on that ever since he left backcourt. Wow, and that's the advantage he has in Mays out of the open floor using the quickness. That was a terrific dribble drive. North Carolina now by eight. Clemson in trouble. Hammonds. Booker in the post to Hammonds for three. No. Clemson starting to shoot up, fall off the map and shooting for seven. Covers near midcourt. Out of there by Hammonds and stolen by Hammonds and a foul on Green after the steal. That's three on Danny Green. And actually, he stepped into the backcourt, Steve. That, that's, the, that's the move that could have been uh, call that could have been made, but instead the foul. And Hammonds, a nice job of jamming up inside, being active with his hands. Out this far from the basket advantage Cliff Hammonds and uh, Danny Green a little should have been a little more stronger with the ball maybe held the ball up a little higher. Green comes to the sidelines. Uh, Roy Williams they're talking about raking the ball through and clearing some space for yourself. Here's Mays. 
Burns, nowhere to go. Good defense. Rivers there inside. He can't hit. Mays will get it up and in. Tigers now six down. Ellington beats the break. Get yard. That has been the recipe for North Carolina for beating Clemson pressure. The throw over the top. And how about the lob from Ellington? Wow. Car heels by eight. 32 to 7 transition points. Shouldn't be a surprise though they dominate that category. Here's Hammonds and he'll score. Headed to the baseline. He's got six. Back comes Carolina again. Ginyard one more time. Ellington to finish. Clemson's got to get a few more bodies back. Oglesby wants the three. Not that time yet. Uh, fortunate for, for Clemson. That was a early rush shot. Oglesby trying to get it all back at one time. Timeout called by Oliver Purnell. As you can see, this game kind of moving in the wrong direction right now. He wants to get his Tigers on the same page. 11 09 left to go in this second half. Well, we have timeout on the floor as the teams discuss strategy. You should too. Premium service expected. Don't pay it. Talk to Chuck Charles Schwab. What's Oliver saying to the Tigers right now? Well, one of his early comments was directed at Oglesby, and I'm sure he's talking about that early long three. That's a shot that you can get at the end of the shot clock anytime. They just need a good, strong possession. The last time out, they came out, they executed, they got a layup, and that's what they need to do right here. You just get the sense that North Carolina is starting to edge this game out. Here's the look, and this is North Carolina, and they're not a, a big three-point shooting team. It's not a big part of their weapon. When you have the player of the year, you want to go to him inside. And Tyler Hansborough has been much more effective in this second half. Look at Danny Green go after the rebound on his play at the other hand. And it's been, uh, Danny Green has been in for most of the game at the power forward position. They've gone a little bit smaller with him, and he has had a terrific game. Our heels lead in the paint. They lead in transition points. Clemson leads in steals. Devontae Stitt out front. Tigers want to slow this thing down just a little bit, gather some composure. Stitt, baseline, scores. They've scored off every time out, Mike. Yeah, and that's, and that's just one. It's good concentration from your team and good coaching. Draw up a play that you can get you a, a bucket. Lawson with a behind the back turns it over. Tigers now can close back to four with one here. Lawson had five turnovers against Virginia Tech. He had done such a great job before his injury of taking care of the basketball. Well, the turnover story. Here's Hammonds. He won't work. Mays battling for the rebound, and they got a foul on Mays. Or no, it's just going to be out of bounds off Mays' knee. And it goes back to North Carolina. We have a timeout on the court. Watch Marcus Ginyard get up and score on the dunk as the Tar Heels get going in transition. They lead the Clemson Tigers by six. North Carolina leading Clemson here in the championship game of the ACC tournament, 63 to 57. Of course, most of Tar Heel Nation, if not all of Tar Heel Nation, and most of the ACC and around the country in mourning. A memorial for their fallen student president, Eve Carson, who was killed about 10 days ago. One of the, and the fans are wearing stickers, and even the players have a medallion on their uniform as well. Roy Williams with the ribbon, a spate of violence that has struck campuses across the country, and unfortunately, two campuses in the ACC, Virginia Tech last April, and in North Carolina most recently between those, Northern Illinois and Auburn. It just shows you what where violence uh, touches it. You think you think of a college campus as a very safe, nurturing environment, and it's been violated far too many times. I well, was two children in college. I, I certainly understand that. Here's Lawson down the lane, puts it up and in. Ty Lawson with two gutty second-half baskets, and that increases the lead to eight. Just no help side, no bigs for Clemson stepping up the penetration that time. Potter looking for Mays in the post. Drives with the left hand, changes to the right and scores. Yeah, David, David Potter got time because of Sam Perry's injury early on in the year. A very competent offensive player. I like the fact he didn't settle for the jump shot and tried to put some pressure on Hansborough defensively. Seaver, Maryland, we got a whistle and a foul. 
And the foul is going to be charged to Ty Lawson. And let's take a look, Mike, at our Chrysler game summary. Points in the paint dominated by North Carolina. And of course, the transition points are plus 25 right there. And Wayne Ellington having another special day against Clemson. James Mays is credited with that foul. And he leaves the floor with three. Over to Stevenson. Stevenson over Potter and scores. Second time they've gotten that lob. Gilliard missed one early in the second half, but Stevenson able to give some good points off the bench. Now the Tar Heels keeping that six to eight point buffer. Looking at Booker in the post, they can't get to him. They've got Hansbro out on Potter. Here's Stitt. Speeding to the corner now. Rivers. Inside Booker. Hansbro board the miss. They just see Clemson tightening up offensively on their shots in this second half. A lot second of, half field goal. A lot of that has to do with North Carolina's defense. Hansbro touches the ball out of bounds. It's going to be Clemson ball. But I also 17th think, turnover. I also think Steve. Uh, being in an ACC tournament final for the first time. A new experience for these guys. All of these North Carolina players have been here last year. Won the championship last year, of course, in Tampa. Clemson. First title game appearance since 1962. And uh, headed to the NCAA for the first time since 1998. Potter on the drive. Tried to leave it off for Booker, intercepted by Ginyard. Could have thrown a bounce pass. Too many hands in the area. Lawson again. Suffering no. Uh, looks no worse for the wear. He has been very quick to the basket in the second half. Hammonds commits an offensive foul, trying to rub off Ginyard, who's not only good at the offensive end, but one of the best defensive players in this league. Well, here's a look at Ty Lawson. Just a little juke. The hesitation dribble gets Stitt to stand up straight. And then Gidger just leading Hammonds to the baseline. Very good call by the referees. All defensive player Marcus Ginyard. Potter goes out. It'll be Perry, Hammonds, Mays, and Rivers. So look at our all tail scoreboard. Was yesterday, Pittsburgh beating Georgetown. Also yesterday, UCLA, winner. It was actually been a little bit of a groundswell, Steve, of uh, asking the coaches, I think, in the ACC, they would like to see it go back to a Saturday final to get that extra day of rest going into the tournament. Let's see what television said. No. <laughs> <laughs> Clemson in that 1 3 1 zone. Here's Green shooting over it. Danny Green, second triple of the day. North Carolina pulling away 72 59. And Green with a foul at the other end. That's his fourth. And a timeout on the court with 7.46 left to play here in this second half. Right now, the Tigers are in trouble. Danny Green for three from outside. He's got 12. And the lead is 13 for North Carolina. Well, let it be known that Tyler Hansborough spends a lot of energy on the defensive end. He and Trevor Booker have really waged a battle down in the low post. Getting to kick it out right there. Hansborough working to change angles defensively. Making Booker, uh, making it tougher for him to receive inside. See the steal right there. And then Hansborough on the other end. Booker getting the block and the foul on that play. But Booker working equally as hard to deny him looks inside. But Tyler Hansbone has been able to open up a little bit in this second half. 14 points for him, six of nine shooting. Keep it up. They'll both be watching the selection show in traction. <laughs> 7.46 left to go. And let's bring in Scott Przanski to the conversation. Well, Steve, in the previous time out, it was interesting. Uh, Ty Lawson came over to the huddle. He's been struggling a little bit. And Roy Williams pulled him aside before he came out on the floor and said, Ty, you're a good player. Forget about it. Just go play like it. He responded and really exploded for those two layups. All right now, Clemson needs to explode, and Casey Rivers does. 25 points for Casey Rivers. 
The Tigers are saying this is the time. Right, it's a big five point swing because he had the missed dunk on the one end and then the three there. Here's Hansbro, an open jumper. A rarity for him today. Ginyard's shot is blocked by Sam Perry. Three on two break. Right, Rivers had an idea to take another three, Steve. He wanted the defense to retreat. Hammonds. Uh, whistle. And a travel violation. As Mays took too many steps. Oliver Purnell wants the pressure to be turned up. But even then, Steve, in Clemson, they have a lot of dead ball turnovers, which means that they can still get into their press. And they got a turnover here. Rivers with three more. What a virtuoso performance by Casey Rivers. 72-67, and Clemson's right back in it. And an offensive foul on Quentin Thomas. Look out. The Tigers are not done by any means. Why well, amazing resolve by the Clemson Tigers, a team of North Carolina's stature, stretching the lead out. And the little play, Steve, means so much, even with the lead. The missed dunk right there. Leads to a three-point bomb down the other way, down to the other end for Rivers. And then this steal right here, the Clemson Tigers very much in this game. Down by five. They were down by 13. Eight unanswered points is taking care of that. Here's Rivers again. Ellington had the ball knocked out of his hands and out of bounds. It's going to be Tar Heel ball, but right, it's Marcus Ginyard's plight in life to go in and put out fires and he's been put on Casey Rivers right now and probably will be with him for the duration of the game. With the three pointers Casey Rivers six of twelve rest of the team chipping in three of twelve. And Oglesby has those. Here's Lawson in the front court. A note to rest of team give it to Rivers to shoot threes. Ellington on the other end answers with two. He's got twenty three. We're seeing some great play. Well, I guess that Wayne Ellington said that shoot, that sweet shooting stroke. Beautiful jump shot. Three easy choices to the all tournament team. Here comes Booker inside, and he is fouled. And who's the foul on? It could be Danny Green. If it is, it's number five. Everybody kind of goes silent because they think that that might be the one. That's it for Danny Green. He'll be out for the final 554 and whatever might lie beyond that. As he has fouled out of the game, a, a strong performance by Danny Green today with 12 points. Well, two things happen there. You get, you lose a three point shooter, a very good defender, and you have Dion, but then conversely, you get some size inside to work against uh, Mays. And Booker. I would imagine right now Deion Thompson would guard Booker just to save Hansborough some save him a little energy and save some fouls. Two shots for Sam Perry. Both teams are in the bonus. ACC basketball is brought to you in part by Cooper Tires. Championship Sunday in Charlotte, which has been a marvelous host of this tournament for its 12th running. Here, 55th overall. Perry misses the second. Hansbro boards it. And I think the city has really embraced this tournament, Steve, as they have with basketball, the CIAA tournament here, and then of course the NCAA tournament coming to town. Two weeks regional finals. Tar Heels might find themselves back here if they survive here. Ball lost off a Clemson player. It's going to be North Carolina ball. People are bummed about that. You're a Bobcats who have to be on the road for the whole month of March. <laughs> Headed to Memphis tonight. <laughs> Here is Hansbro off front. Five and a half to play in his championship game. It's a two possession lead for North Carolina. Ellington inside Hansbro got it to go. 16 points for Tyler Hansbro. Not only is Ellington shooting well in this game, but he's also creating opportunities for his teammates. Four assists, Mike. Stitt out front. Stitt to the rack and draws the foul. Ty Lawson with the foul here. 
Deion Thompson a screener here and he get the split and that puts a lot of pressure on Raymond Sykes inside he had to step up and it allowed Hansbro to get a little lane to receive and see the separation right there he has his hands ready terrific play inside Two shots coming for Devontae Stitt as you look at Cliff Hammonds Shot goes. This broadcast is a copyrighted presentation. Any use of it without the express permission of Raycom Sports and the ACC is prohibited. Steve Martin here with Mike Jaminski, Scott Przwanski, Mike Cogwood, Jason Capel, producer Rob Reichley, Bill McCoy is our director. Breakthrough on hand, John Mandry on staff. Yeah, missed and tipped back up there, but a reach in foul is going to be charged here, and it looks like it's going to be on Booker. Trevor Booker picks up the foul. That's going to be his second, but it's one and one at the other end. Well, in the substitution now that um, you've got Hammonds coming in, so you've got your experience at point guard, and then with Oglesby and Rivers out there, two shooters that can spread the floor. Playing with a broken right wrist, Cliff Hammonds, left handed shooter. Broke it uh, late in the season, played the last four games with it. He broke it in the North Carolina game and then continued the block. No, actually, Hammonds, he broke it in the Maryland, Maryland game. game. It, was That's the, it was the block on James Gist, one of the great blocks of the year. One half of the one and one, successful for Deion Thompson, who has three for the afternoon. This necessarily isn't Clemson's best defensive team out on the floor, but uh, probably their best offensive team. Oliver Purnell looking for some scoring. Both teams have left some shots on the table, and North Carolina does there. As Thompson hits the second half of the one on one, it's an eight point Tar Heel lead, 77 69. Under five to play. Booker inside, rubs off Hansbro and hits. Right, and Hansbro took a shot in the stomach that time, absorbed quite a blow. Those two have been dealing it to each other all afternoon. Ginyard. Thompson. Blocked by Booker, taken by Rivers. Oh, boy. Uh, just no elevation on that shot by Thompson. It was an easy block for Rivers to come in or uh, Booker to come in from the weak side. Hammonds drops it in low. Booker at work against Hansbro. Misses Mays boards. We got a whistle and a foul. Foul may be coming. To Thompson as you look at Booker. Here's the look inside. Big play on that block. He likes the he likes the left hand side, so he can turn to the baseline with that left hook. This is the thing we talked about yesterday against Duke. Clemson 72 percent down the stretch. James Mays was big from the free throw line there. Let's see how they perform in this game. Uh, that's the 10th team foul on North Carolina, so it's two shots the rest of the way for Clemson. Oglesby comes off the floor. Sam Perry comes on as. Oliver Brunell switches defense for offense. Mays one more. No. Ginyar. To Hansbro. Through the lane, draws three defenders. Offensive foul on Hansbro. Roy Williams can't believe it. KC Rivers, the one stepping in. There's the play, a little flare. Hansbro finds a lot of room, and they, Rivers stood up, stood his ground, put his hand straight up in the air. Good call. Tigers get the ball back with four to play. Rivers had a notion, get some separation. <laughs> Booker tries to tip it in, and Hansbro goes up for the rebound. Strong rebound inside by Hansbro. It's his ninth. And a whistle. And a foul coming up. It's going to be on Booker inside. Two possession game, 345 left to play. Tar Heels at the line when we come back. North Carolina already with 20 turnovers. They need positive possessions. Look what they do in uh, the Tigers right now. Like four points at the free throw line. One and one, and the first one by Hansbro. Good shot. 
for all tell college basketball scoreboard conference tournaments uh, winding up. We've got the uh, Big 12 and SEC and Big 10 to determine their champions later on today. The ACC champion may be decided, maybe, in three minutes and 40 seconds. The two teams can't seem to stay out of overtime. Trevor Booker inside, scores! Well, that's tough when you, when you make him go right with that little jump hook and he still scores. He's tough to defend. Now coming up on Clemson. And I believe it's going to be on Oglesby. And that's going to be four on the sharpshooter from three point line. I talked to her, the, one of the keys to the game for Clemson to play, to defend hard without fouling. That's right. You, you know, you've got Lawson, a very good free throw shooter. Ellington, a very good three, free throw shooter. And Tyler Hansborough as well. Possession arrow goes to North Carolina, and they miss yet another free throw. They've left a few on the table this afternoon. Seven out of 12. Lawson, who's an 82% free throw shooter, gets the back half of a two-shot foul. Two shots both ways from here on out. Mays, center of the floor. Diagonal to Booker who converts. 12 for Trevor Booker. Clemson is just four points back. Lawson. Lawson. Against the pressure, Lawson and Thomas on the floor at the same time to help break the press. Lawson gets it back. Carolina with one fewer scorer on the floor with Green out and a block by Booker sends the ball out of bounds. Quite right, interesting, and Hammonds makes that play because he stands in. I talked this how hard it is to double team with a small player, but because he's so tough, it keeps Hansborough from elevating, and that allows Booker to get a block. It's a block number six for Trevor Booker. Cliff Hammonds, one of the most underrated players in the history of this conference, certainly in the history of Clemson basketball. Has been so solid for so long. Winningest player in the history of their franchise, of their, of, their, of their program. Three on the shot clock for Thomas. No. Rebound comes away now to Booker. Two and a half to play. Clemson, two possessions from the lead. Hammonds, third team all ACC and first team all academic. Rivers. He's been spectacular today. 28 points, leads all scores. He's got it on the wing. Hansborough fronts the post. Five on the shot clock. Booker's open for three. Hansborough boards the miss. Well, you know, you're looking to try to find mismatches. And James Mays is being played by Marcus Ginyard. Ginyard actually the power forward of, of this team that's out on the floor. Foul out front has got to be on Sam Perry. That's his first, but Lawson will go up for two. Roy Williams getting a smaller, better ball handling team out on the floor. And we see the game reset. Both teams in the double bonus here. Tigers with two timeouts, Tar Heels with four. Possession arrow for North Carolina. It's interesting right now you go offense for defense. If Oglesby comes in for one of the bigs, whether it be Booker or Mays, to get another uh, shooter on the floor. Here's Lawson. No. North Carolina in the last five minutes is three of five from the free throw line. That's in the last five minutes. John Madrid's keeping track of that. There's the free throws for the game. North Carolina has missed seven. They are second in the league in free throw percentage. Lawson makes up for it. He's in double figures. The lead is five. Oglesby and Rivers are your three-point shooters. And we got a foul away from the action. It's going to be on Quentin Thomas as Oglesby was on the baseline trying to fight his way out of a screen. That's going to be four on Thomas. And Oglesby goes to the line. Oglesby is an 85% free throw shooter. Oglesby for two. You know, wouldn't it be ironic if Clemson goes on to win this game and in the last two win it at the free throw line. Leading Duke and North Carolina. Oglesby, freshman from Cleveland, Tennessee. 
It's the first, cuts it to a four point margin. Pulled up short on the second. Hansbro with the rebound. Yeah, you throw those, throw all your shooting stats out the window right now. This is the last two minutes of the ACC tournament final. Lawson. Ellington, who's been outstanding today. Under 90 seconds to play. The Tar Heels looking at their 17th ACC championship if they can hang on to a four point lead. Lawson finds a finisher, but they can't finish it up. Gets it back with a minute four. And calls a timeout wisely while being trapped by Cliff Hammonds and Casey Rivers. The man who's been getting it done, Trevor Booker for the Clemson Tigers, working hard inside, Mike. Yeah, here's, here's Booker, and he's so good on that block where he turned back to his left hand, just bullied Hansborough out of the way, and then getting the defensive stop as well. Those are two big men going at it down to the low block. You can see the block right there. He's got six block shots on the day. Trevor Booker, sophomore from Whitmire, South Carolina. You look at this Clemson team, Mike. I'm sure they'll lose a Hammonds, who is going to be a big loss to them, and James Mays, but Booker's just a sophomore. Stitt, just a freshman. Rivers will be a senior next year. That's a good recruits come in. There's the game reset again. Minute two to go. Tar Heels. Big possession for North Carolina. An effort to lock this up. Clemson playing out defensively in a man. Austin Thomas. Still some time on the shot clock. Ellington double teamed and a foul. The, 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 only, the one guy you want to foul out on the floor is Ginyard at 68%, but everybody else north of, uh, north of 78, 79. And Ellington the best of the bunch, although he has missed a couple in this game. He has Ellington 86% on the season, but this afternoon he's one for three. 41.4 seconds left to go. Clemson would like to rewrite history. 22. Let's see how this plays out, Steve. But credit Clemson, North Carolina up 13. They could have gone away after a, a long, tough ACC tournament, but they battled back to put themselves in a position to play in the last 40. Ellington with 24. Perry comes out. Terrence Oglesby back in. Offense for defense now as Oliver Purnell gets his three-point shooters all over the spectrum. Mays and Booker inside. Here's Ellington again. No. Booker with a rebound. If you're North Carolina, you're defending the three-point arc. Any two-point shot doesn't really hurt you. Oglesby guarded by Ginyard. Oldersby looks for separation. No. The rebound taken by Lawson and a big board. And a foul coming up in backcourt against Clemson. There's the look inside. <laughs> we talked about it. Marcus Ginyard, if you can shoot, he's going to defend you. And he made Oglesby take a tough three. And Ty Lawson. Ty Lawson for two shots. Has shown that he is uh, he may be coming back from that injury. Five rebounds, eight assists for him on the day. This is the best he's looked in this tournament. Lawson with the free throw. Twenty five point five seconds left to go. It's a six point edge. And now it's a seven point edge. Same strategy for North Carolina. Defend the arc, defend the three point line, switch every interchange outside. You can give up a two. Well, just got a, an idea what will probably go on in Roy Williams' huddle. Now Oliver Purnell has problems with his team now. Down by seven. 25.5 seconds left to go. Now North Carolina will. Put up some pressure to cause Clemson to use some time. Three seconds to get over the midcourt line. Stid on the drive, score the basket, and the foul on Ty Lawson. That's four on Lawson.
Stitt with 10, and he'll be on the line. A wry smile from Roy Williams, and we sung Ty Lawson's oh, praises, but a big mistake right there. You don't want any fouls in this situation if you're beaten, except that maybe let a big come in from the weak side. Stitt on for one. You've got Ginyard, a small guy, and on the low post on the elite side. And the rebound lost by North Carolina. It's going to be Clemson ball. This could be a four point possession. And that's why they went right to Ginyard. He's not a guy who's accustomed to being on that last position on the free throw line. Hansborough's on the other side, but the miss came to Ginyard. So Stitt got the basket, missed the three point play. They could get two, or possibly if Oglesby gets a good look at it, three. Rivers cuts. And a foul coming up on Hansbro, tripping Mays. And that's four on Hansbro. Roy Williams not happy with how his team is reacting down the stretch. The Tigers need to tighten it up. As far as free throws are concerned, they're two of five in the last five minutes. First, they did a superlative job. They hit seven of their last eight foul shots against Duke, and that powered them to the win. Same situation, Steve, on the free throw line with Mays. Now he's been solid in the last couple of games, but on the far side, you got Rivers on that low block and Marcus Ginyer down on the on the first position. Big miss there for Mays. Oglesby comes out, Perry comes in. A lot of misses for both teams. Ten for Clemson, eight for North Carolina. Mays, one more. No, Ginyard with the rebound. Solid. And a foul coming up. And it's going to be on Mays. Foul from James Mays is fourth. And that's his fourth. If we were to go over time, there won't be many people left. <laughs> All the key players on both sides have at least four. In the case of Danny Green, have already walked the plank here. All right, North Carolina. Number one, Marcus Gidyard. Marcus Gidyard is going to the line for. Two shots. They are seven of ten in the last five minutes. And this is whatever the outcome, Steve. This has been a terrific trio of games between these two teams. Sure has. And with respect to the tournament, you look at semifinal Saturday and this championship game. It's it's been something. ACC having one of its stronger years. Both of these teams bound for postseason play beyond here. Ginyard. Ginyard gets it. Got nine. And a timeout taken by Clemson with 15 seconds left to go. They are down two possessions. Down six. KC Rivers with 28 points, but he's been silent over the last four or five minutes. Our Pepsi players of the game. Wayne Ellington with 24 for the Tar Heels on 10 of 13 and four assists. And KC Rivers. What an afternoon for. Young man from Charlotte, North Carolina, to Independence High School. The thing that North Carolina did, they found that fourth score. Danny Green fouled out with 12, but Ty Lawson's contribution has been huge. 12 points, eight assists, five rebounds for him. Hansborough has been ordinary by his standards, and that's the second game that Clemson has been able to do him, but to do him like make him look like that. But Ellington, uh, 10 of 13, boy, he has been terrific. Kenyard has nine. On the afternoon, and he's had a solid game defensively. Talked about his contribution as you look at Wayne Alec, one of our Pepsi players of the game. Tyler Hansbro hasn't been too far behind offensively. Okay. Yeah, you say he, he looks ordinary. 18, a lot of guys would like to get throw a double double up there in the ACC tournament final. Hey, what? He, he doesn't even look like he sweats. We know he does work hard. Yeah, such is the commitment he has to his conditioning. Everybody on their feet. Final chapter of this drama to play itself out. Hammonds has it stolen by Ginyard. And that will make Clemson chase. And they get the foul just before North Carolina turned it over with 9.1 seconds left. North Carolina fans still unwilling to uh, break out in celebration <laughs> at this point. I think if Marcus Ginyard makes these two free throws, and 
And I got a, a guy who has been solid, 10 points both in the first two games. Looking to get there again, but nine rebounds for him, a terrific defensive job. He might be a candidate along with Ellington and Hansborough for first team all uh, tournament. Yeah, Casey Rivers. Maybe Trevor Booker. Got A.D. Visayo to consider. North Carolina, 8 of 13 for the free throw line in the last five minutes. Again, yard with a miss. A wet spot there right in front of Les Jones. A little leak in the roof here yesterday. Boy, that rain was a torrent. Fortunately, it was down in Atlanta, came up here. Again, yard, one out of two. This timeout's taken by the Tar Heels with 9.1 seconds left to go as Roy Williams wants to talk things over his team up here by seven and 9.1 seconds away from winning their seventh team ACC tournament championship they would stand alone in that distinction breaking a tie with Duke. 9.1 seconds left to go Clemson to inbound one more time North Carolina to show some token pressure Roy wanted to call time up just to set that up. Stid into front court. They don't want to foul. Oglesby for three, and he's going to get fouled by Quentin Thomas on a three point shot. That's the fifth foul on Thomas. So Quentin Thomas is gone for the afternoon, and in comes Will Graves. Our Red Lobster, nothing but net shot of the game. Big transition by Wayne Ellington. Yeah, it's just a beautiful look. Picture perfect jump shot, great form, shoots a, you know, you score 24 points and only take 13 shots. That's pretty efficient. 10 for 13 for him today. Terrence Oglesby on the free throw line for three shots. Just isn't enough time for Clemson with 2.2 seconds left to go. Oglesby again. Oglesby's one of those freshmen who'll be coming back for the Tigers. Now he tries to miss. He tries to miss. <laughs> and the free throw just. Throws a bullet out there. You have to hit the rim. That's the problem with that play. Yeah, he didn't. And uh, they reset the shot clock to 2.2 seconds. Good effort. Can't miss for trying. Graves on the inbounds. And he will dribble away to a 17th ACC championship for the North Carolina Tar Heels despite a game effort. By Oliver, Oliver Purnell and the Clemson Tigers. North Carolina wins back to back ACC tournament championships 2007 and 2008. Tyler Hansborough, Wayne Ellington and company in victory. We've got interviews and more coming back, so stay with us here at Bobcats Arena as the North Carolina Tar Heels lay claim to the ACC title.